Drones are the perfect tool for hyperlapses, as they can move smoothly over a long distance in all directions, like a huge slider in the sky, including elevation changes. They also offer unique points of view, free from obstacle from high above. In this video we'll walk you to the process of making a drone hyperlapse in the easiest possible way, suitable for beginners. We access hyperlapse mode in the photo video menu near the shutter. We are presented with four different modes, free, circle, course lock and waypoint. Most of the time I use waypoint mode, which is by far the most powerful and flexible one. The mode free is the one to use for static time lapses. I have made a step-by-step -step guide on how to make drone time lapses. You can watch it by clicking on the link on the screen. For hyperlapses, the only other mode I occasionally use is circle, as it is not easy to replicate a perfect circular move using waypoint. I practically never use the mode course lock, as it produces moves that can be performed in a much more accurate and flexible way using waypoint. Time lapses and hyperlapses need movement in the scene, otherwise a simple photo is more interesting. The movement may come from people walking, cars, boats or other vehicles. It can also come from natural events like clouds or transition from day to night. The motion of the point of view, which is the camera of the drone, is another way to add movement to the scene. This is our scene, a quiet village on the foothill of Mount Etna in Sicily, with several other villages on the slope of the volcano. It is better to choose the busiest part of the day to get some action from cars and people walking. We can also catch some cloud movement around the mountain and even some activity from the volcano if we are lucky. It is also crucial to choose the time of the day for the best light conditions. I always avoid shooting photos, videos and hyperlapse in the central area of a sunny day. The shadows are way too harsh and the results are always very disappointing. It is suggested to choose the first couple of hours after sunrise or before sunset, or to shoot with the sun covered by cloud, acting like a big softbox. Another excellent time is after sunset when the street lights are turned on and there is still a bit of natural light, although some advanced post-processing is needed due to the shift in luminosity. Hyperlapses open the doors to plenty of creativity. It is possible to obtain slightly different results by modifying some parameters. I often shoot the same hyperlapse several times in different light conditions or applying different values to certain parameters until I get the ideal result. This process of trial and error is part of the fun. There are two parameters that are common to all different hyperlapse modes, the length of the resulting short movie and the interval between photos. A hyperlapse must be at least 10 seconds long to be fully appreciated. In general, I set the length at 13 seconds. In certain situations, I prefer longer ones, especially in the case of transition from day to night. But with drones, we are limited by the battery life. The interval in seconds between each photo modifies the speed of the movement within the scene, as shown by these examples. With drones we cannot use intervals shorter than 3 seconds, due to the time needed for buffering each photo and because of the long shutter speed needed. Due to the limited battery life, in most cases the longest interval available is 4 seconds. So we generally choose a length of 13 seconds and an interval of either 3 or 4 seconds. The shooting time needed with an interval of 3 seconds is approximately 16 minutes. With an interval of 4 seconds is about 22 minutes, which is still feasible, although a bit tight. 3 seconds is a good choice when the movement comes mainly from people, cars or other vehicles. 
4 seconds is preferable in the case of cloud movement. Another parameter to select is the speed of the movement of the drone. It is set in different ways according to the hyperlapse mode we are in, as we will see later. In general, I prefer to have a relatively slow and subtle movement, but here again, different speed values can give a different feel to the same hyperlapse. In most DJI models the aperture is fixed, with the exception of the Mavic 3. So there are only two values set for exposure, ISO and shutter speed. For ISO it is preferable to keep the lowest value, which is 100, but if needed we can go up to 800 without a noticeable loss of quality. This gives us some room to play with. The value for shutter speed is crucial as it affects the amount of motion blur, the single most important factor in hyperlapses. The ideal value for shutter speed with a drone is 1 second in easy wind conditions. According to the light conditions it's not always possible to dial in this value, in this case it's possible to select faster values up to 1 fifth of a second, but the flow of the elements in motion will not be as smooth. Motion blur is the most important topic for time lapses and hyperlapses, but it would take too long to analyze it in depth here. To anyone seriously interested in hyperlapses, I suggest watching my specific video by clicking on the link on the screen. To select specific exposure values in different line conditions, ND filters are needed. Please refer to my specific video about them by clicking on the link. By clicking on the small icon at the bottom left of the exposure window, we access some other options. At the top, the white balance. I suggest always using manual mode. With most models, I set it at around 5500 Kelvin, but I find that the Mini 3 and 3 Pro have a tendency towards a yellowish tone, so with these models, I set it at around 5000 Kelvin. Then we choose the resolution of the auto generated short movie. The options are 4K or 1080p. I always use 4K. Further down, it is possible to choose to save each individual photo in RAW or JPEG format in order to post process them for much better results. I always use the individual RAW files, but beginner can start by simply using the auto generated short movie, which has improved in the current generation of DJI drones. Let's start with a simple orbiting one. I set the drone at the maximum height allowed by the rules, a bit more of 100 meter, so that I can frame the center of the village with a downward view, keeping the sky out of the equation. This reduces the dynamic range and makes it much easier to expose. The sun is covered by clouds and it is excellent for this kind of shot, as the shadows will be very soft and the different luminosity within the image is reduced. The village has narrow roads and with the full sun the shadows will be very harsh. We are in the middle of a Sunday afternoon and I hope there will be some action in the village. I put on my strongest ND filter, a ND1000, and bring the drone to the desired starting position. In the GI Fly menu I enter hyperlapse mode and choose circle, the second icon from the top. I start by setting the exposure. I keep the ISO to the minimum value, 100, and try to set the shutter speed to 1 second for the correct amount of motion blur. The light is a bit too strong with this ND filter, so I have to settle for a faster shutter speed of about half a second. The flow of the car should be acceptable, although not ideal. Then I select a target by drawing a box around it. It will be the center of the orbiting move. I fine tune the exact starting position and then enter the length of the hyperlapse at 13 seconds with an interval of 3 seconds. The next selection is the speed of the movement of the aircraft during the shooting process. In most cases I like a slow subtle move when the scene contains already a good amount of motion, so I choose a low value of 0.2 meters per second. Feel free to experiment with different values. Finally, we need to select the direction of the move, either clockwise or counterclockwise. 
We can then hit the red shutter and the aircraft will start shooting 325 photos while rotating. This is the result. The flow of the car is quite good, although not perfect. The shadows are nice and soft, thanks to the sun being covered by clouds. Although in the second part there is an increase in luminosity due to the sun breaking out. I'm quite pleased with the result. As mentioned earlier, for all kinds of other hyperlapses I use waypoint mode, the most powerful and flexible. It works by flying to each individual point forming a mission, framing and recording it. The position of the aircraft, the elevation and the direction of the camera will be stored for that point. The software will handle smooth transition between points. It is much easier to explain with a simple example. I take off the same day, later on in the afternoon. The sun is still covered by clouds and there is a bit less luminosity, which is good for our purposes. I select waypoint mode and I still have an ND1000 filter on. I will start from the center of the village with the camera pointing downwards, like in the previous circle hyperlapse, but this time I will end up framing Mount Etna, thus including the sky in the image. The luminosity will change, so I need to enter exposure values suitable for both scenes. When framing the center of the village I can see that I can use the ideal shutter speed of one second. The scene is dark, so it would help to raise the ISO value, maybe to 400. Moving to the last point where the camera faces the top of Mount Etna, I notice that I can keep the shutter speed at 1 second and raise the ISO value to 200. Excellent! Now it's time to set the points forming the mission. In general I prefer to use 2 or 3 points to avoid too many changes of direction, although it is possible to enter many more. I make sure that in the safety tab of the settings the obstacle avoidance action is set to bypass for safety reason. I then fly to the first point at the maximum elevation close to the center of the village with the camera pointing downwards. After framing I open the small window set waypoint and tap on the button C1 of the remote controller to enter the first point, which will be shown in the first icon to the left of the small window. I then fly about 30 meters backwards and lower the altitude while maintaining the center of the village in the middle of the frame. I can enter the second point. Finally I turn the camera to the right to frame Mount Etna while moving diagonally backward and to the left before entering the third and last point. I can now set the length of the short movie to 13 seconds and the interval to 3 seconds. In the left part of the small window it is possible to choose normal sequence, in which case the shooting process will start from the first point. Tapping on it will reverse the sequence and start from the last point, which can be useful to save battery time. This is the result, the camera follows the car in the center of the village while slightly descending and moving backward, before sliding toward Mount Etna. The flow of the cars is very smooth, with a shutter speed at 1 second, and the shadows are very soft. Sadly, we cannot see the tip of Mount Etna as it is covered by clouds. Notice that there is no option to set the speed of the move. In Webpoint Hyperlapse, the speed is a function of the distance traveled during the process. The longer the distance, the faster the speed. I cannot go into further details into waypoint mode, it will take too long. Please refer to my in-depth video about waypoint hyperlapses by clicking on the link on the screen. Waypoint mode has the advantage of saving each individual mission, which can be retrieved to quickly make the exact hyperlapse with different settings at different times of the day or in different seasons. I put together a playlist with all the useful tutorials for users who want to dig deeper into drone hyperlapses. Click on this link to access the playlist. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.